Welcome to class students. Today what we're going to do is learn how to read a standard English ruler. This one happens to be a tape measure example. Um, on this tape measure we have both feet and inches. Um, the tape measure happens to be a 25 foot tape measure. Um, this division uh, that we're going to do today and what we're going to talk about is all of these little lines that happen between the whole numbers. We can all read what these whole numbers are, but to be a little bit more accurate with the work that we're going to do in here, we need to figure out how to determine this space. All right, the best thing we can do is slide that out of the way. And what we're going to do is start with in our notebook here, and we are going to make a frame. This frame is going to look kind of like an upside down large U. And we're going to label this in our notebook. Take a little bit of opportunity to do that right now, because you need to present this to your instructor when you're done. We're going to label it as 0, and we're going to label it as 1. Okay? What you have there is the quantity of space that's provided between any whole number. So we're looking at between 10 and 11 here. I have that labeled out as 0 and 1. It can also be the end of your ruler, end of your tape measure, okay, between the adjustable end and the whole number. Um, this end ends up adjusting to true zero, so we can pull on that. And as we make a measurement, it adjusts for its thickness, okay. So back to kind of what we're doing here. Um, this space that's divided out uh, can be cut down into smaller fractional measurements. The most logical is if we split it into two equal parts, okay? Equal on both sides, if we take half on one, half on the other, we get a whole number. So this would obviously be a half inch. So again, half on one side, half on the other, if we take both of those and combine them, two over two, that equates out or equals two one inch. So the next smallest division, if we look at our scale again and we start to break it down even farther, we got to think about it like this. If I had a piece of pizza here and I just split that pizza in half because I need to share it with my brother. Okay, he gets one half, I get the other. Okay, the next logical division would then be to split it into fourths because we need to share with both mom and dad. Okay? Or, you know, thinking of it as dividing down a space. Okay? So, we're going to break this down into quarters. So, this space right here gets broke down again to one fourth. Okay? So, notice there's a space to the left, space to the right. Both of those spaces are equal. So if I take both of these spaces and add them up, I get a half inch. Well, we're going to note that right below here, squiggly line, 2 over 4. That equals a half inch. Well, we got to do something with this space up here. Well, that's where we split this again. We end up with 3 quarters. If we look at how many fourths it takes to make a hole, Again, we'll bring the pizza example back here. So how many sections do I have to make up a whole pizza? Well, the obvious answer then would be to put a four down here. So four over four, or four quarters equals a dollar to add up to a whole quantity. Also, take a look at what's going on with the numbers here. Two over two, four over four. What's going on there? You're right, the numbers are doubling. Okay, so as those numbers double, we move down in smaller quantities of measure, but we still equal out to the whole number when we add them all up. Okay? So looking at this space over here between 0 and 1 fourth, we're going to need to break that down even smaller. So the next logical division would then be to double this bottom number to an 8. So 1 8 we got to think about it like this. As we start to look at how many pieces we got here, we got one, two, three, four. We split this down. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. 
we need a couple more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight people coming over to eat pizza now. We need to have eight pieces of pizza for them. So one eighth. Okay. So notice the space between one eighth and zero. Notice the space between one eighth and one fourth. How many eighths are in a quarter? Two. The space up here, we have three eighths. When we get to a half inch, how many eighths are in a half inch? Four. Five eighths. Three quarters. Be six eighths. We have seven eighths. And then again, if we double these numbers, eight over eight equals one whole unit. By now you should have yours broken down just like this. Okay? If you don't, pause the video, please get caught up. Because next we're going to break it down into its uh, the, a standard smallest unit of measure for all of the rulers that I have in the shop. Okay? I'll pause for a second here. All right, we need to break down the space between 1 8 and 0. Okay, so if we take a look at that space, again, following the same rules that we have in the past, everything's doubling on the bottom. We're going to break this down into 1 over 16. So that's a sixteenth of an inch. So if we look at the space here between 1 16th and 0, it's the same as it is between 1 16th and an eighth. How many sixteenths make up an eighth? Answer is two. All right, so we get to our half inch mark, and we look at how many sixteenths are in a half. Well, we take the whole number on the bottom of 16, we cut that in half, and obviously it is 8. So 8 sixteenths. And when we get to our whole quantity, again, everything has doubled all the way down. So we look at that and say, okay, so we have 15, we add one more, there's 16 over 16. That's a whole unit. That is all of the smallest dim divisions on a standard English rule, tape measure, or ruler. Now, can you go smaller? Yes, yes, you can. So this quantity would then double again to a 32nd or even a 64th. But on most rulers, the rulers that you're going to have, okay, the smallest division between 0 and 1 would be a 16th of an inch. Okay? Most rulers will note that down here on the bottom. Okay? This one obviously does not. So you'd have to actually count this in order to figure out. So we can do that together. So it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So then we could understand that the smallest unit of measure on that scale is then a 16th of an inch. Okay. So again, we'll do that one more time here for you, just so you understand and know that how to do it. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16.
Okay. So, going back to my example again, you should now have this in your notebook. Okay. So again, looking over again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Sixteenth of an inch, smallest unit of measure on a scale. Okay. All right, now how do you read the ruler? Well, if we have a measurement anywhere between 0 and the whole number, Okay, so let's say between A and B here, how do I read what that measurement is? Well, I simply take and I count up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, I counted up 11 little lines. The smallest unit of measure on this scale is a sixteenth. So that distance is then 11 sixteenths. Okay, let's try another one here. Slide, get a new piece of paper. Let's say it's more than one inch. So we'll mark zero, and we'll mark this quantity right here. Okay. So if it's more than one inch, I know that I can mark down my whole number, so one. Then I can count up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I count up six little lines. So my answer on this would be 1 and 6 sixteenths. Well, we can't put that down because it's not a simplified or a reduced fraction. So we can use 6 sixteenths. We can come back to our chart here find 6 sixteenths and find what its simplified version is. So 6 sixteenths is also known as 3 eighths. So a final answer to put in the books then would be 1 and 3 eighths. All right, students, that's how you read a ruler. Um, please take a look at this again. And again, it works to count up the sixteenths and then simplify your answer. Um, if it's more than a whole number, please take the whole numbers down as you pass them and then count from the whole number to the, your measurement to establish your final answer. All right, good luck and happy measuring.